Hi, everybody. I'm Ruham Manzoor, and I'm the managing partner of Maces. Um, I'm really happy to uh, introduce you. to one of uh, you know, our favorite uh, universities in the US, that is Queens College, that is based out of uh, New York City. And we have with us the Assistant Director of Marketing, Mr. Blake Egbert. Hey Blake, Hi. how are you? Hi Ruham, I'm doing great. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to join this wonderful session today and hello to everyone watching. Um, so Blake, how long have you been working there? Yeah, thank you for asking, Ruham. So I've been here now at Queens College for just about a year and a half now. Um, so really excited uh, just to continue working uh, with the wonderful university here at Queens, uh, helping students that may be looking to study abroad uh, within New York City as well, too. And I've previously been working in international higher education for seven years, just helping students learn more about studying in the U.S. through their goals, uh, programs, and looking forward to continuing that. So um, tell me something. I mean, has there been any changes like in the atmosphere of U.S.? You know, like I did my university studies in the U.S. and um, uh, I had a great time. And um, in the last five years, there has been a scare. You know, um, things have been different. Trump has come in and uh, there's been a scare that it's not as uh, student friendly anymore. Um, but again, with Biden coming in, uh, things seem to be very positive. We're getting a lot of interaction. Students are getting interested. What's your thought process on that? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. That's a great question, Ruham. Uh, I get that asked quite a bit as well, too, just from students. And it's certainly an important question around that. Um, I will say that um, it, since uh, President Biden has come in and underneath the Biden administration, there's been a lot of optimism about, about coming to the United States, which is great. Um, President Biden and, and his team are certainly very strong proponents of international education as a whole. Um, President Biden's wife, even herself, uh, works in higher education as a teacher. And and many students are starting to look more now at coming to the United States around that. Um, the United States as a whole uh, does have a wonderful education system. It is known for having a great higher education system, even uh, within the QS news uh, kind of rankings globally. About 30 of the top 100 schools are actually located here in the United States as a whole. And many students are looking to come here to further their education, even whenever they look upon graduating, taking part in OPT, where they can remain back in the United States to continue working and get experience in their field of study around that as well, too. So there is really great optimism and proponents around that and something that hopefully the Biden administration continues to really be proponents on in the future. So. Um, that is that is great to know. Um, now tell me something. Um, Queens College is located. So you know our our the way we are set this uh, thing up, Blake, is you know obviously uh, we're gonna have a little bit of chat and then uh, you're gonna show us a presentation of uh, the university for our audience and then our audience will come back and question. But mainly, you know, the things that I think if you could answer what through your presentation is, you know, how far it is located from Manhattan, you know, cost uh, expenses, um, you know, uh, what kind of expenses students are looking at. Is it expensive to live there? Uh, safety, security, it is New York City. Um, and, and uh, you know, um, uh, is New York City all that? Uh, I have students who, absolutely wouldn't live anywhere else. So, you know, I, I hope you're going to be able to imbibe some of those, uh, you know, uh, vibes for us about the uh, college. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you brought that up as well to uh, New York City and all honestly, and for those watching, uh, I truly mean this when I say it, New York City is my favorite city in the entire United States. Not only is it the largest city here in the US, but it has so many opportunities for both people that are living here, but even students that are studying here as well too. There are 40,000 businesses in, in, in all that just are here in New York City alone. So great opportunities overall for students. And I will say that 
the vibe and the atmosphere is unlike any other that I've experienced in, in many cities in the U.S., whether Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago, just there's something about New York City that really just makes people feel at home. And part of that, and I'll mention it in just a little bit, is diversity, but also, you know, it is the Big Apple. You know, there's so many great things here that are offered uh, for people, whether it's sightseeing, whether, you know, they're looking at safety because many parts of New York City as a whole great communities, great areas, and great safety uh, things around for students and residents overall throughout that. So um, certainly encourage any student. If you are looking at New York City, great, fantastic. But if you haven't, definitely look into that and some of the opportunities it provides. I think one of the best things, I mean, I did my undergrad in the U.S. and all that. So I think the best thing that a U.S. education does for students, and this is for my you know, uh, students who are watching and listening, is you know compared to other universities in other parts of the world i think the best thing about a u.s education is once you're through that you have this sort of confidence that you can do anything you can achieve anything in life and i think that's something that u.s universities does a fantastic job uh, in instilling and, and i you know uh, nowhere better can that happen than in uh, new york city okay now standard disclosure blake uh, it's your favorite city. I studied in a small university town, so I'm not crazy about New York City, but I, I'll tell you this. Part of that is because in 2000, in the year 2000, uh, the millennium, I don't know if you remember, I don't know how old you are, but, uh, you know, we just crossed over a century and I spent that eight hours in front of Times Square. And I tell you, I'm in the crowd. Um, <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I was getting crushed, you know. Um, but, you know, I was much younger than I was able to uh, hold up. So I guess you have a presentation for us and uh, introduce the city and uh, the university. So um, do you want to start that immediately? I do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ruham. And I will start here, too, and, and pop up on my screen. So I hope you and everyone watching can uh, can see my screen uh, right now at the moment as well, too, here. And again, for those watching, thank you so much just for joining this wonderful session hosted by Mesa's uh, today. Thank you so much for taking part. And we hope you find this helpful, just learning more about the U.S., but about Queens College here at the City University of New York. So I want to cover a few things with each of you because I think these things are very important for students because education is one of the most important things for everyone, especially as you look towards your future, your goals, obviously within your career as well too. And at Queens College, we offer many things for students. So I am gonna talk a little bit about some of the great things of New York City, what we offer here at Queens College for students in terms of activities, programs. I certainly want to cover on to the fee structure and what the cost of living, as, as Ruham was mentioning about as well, too, and some of the other exciting things that we have. So with that, um, I do want to mention a little bit about starting off here in New York City. New York City, as I mentioned, is the largest city here in the U.S. as a whole. But the great thing about it is it is very diverse. It is actually the most diverse urban place on the planet. I promise for those of you watching, I am not making that up. That is a true statistic. New York City is very diverse. Wow. It, it actually has five wonderful boroughs. Uh, we call them boroughs. Think of them as an area. Manhattan is one, Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and then Queens. And Queens is the borough or the area that we are located at Queens College. So if you're thinking how far are we from Manhattan? So again, Manhattan, that is where Times Square is. So where Ruham was visiting, as he was mentioning uh, in the past and watching uh, for, for New Year's, just the ball drop. Uh, also, Central Park is there, Wall Street. So our campus is about 16 kilometers away from downtown Manhattan. So very easy to get there using the metro system and the bus uh, routes that are right off of our campus. So to get there as well, too. So very convenient. Now, one of the things that we are really well known for, and I just mentioned a little bit about, is our diversity. Now, many people actually don't know this, but Queens, the area in New York City as a whole, has a population of about 2.3 million people. The great thing about it is almost half of them were actually born in another country. 
our campus alone here at Queens College is about 35% international students. So we have a great community and great students from Bangladesh itself. So if you're a potential student that is looking to study here, you're gonna meet all sorts of friends, both from your home country there in Bangladesh, from all over the world, but obviously American students as well. So you'll see as you go throughout campus, you'll hear different languages, you'll hear your native languages, obviously English as well too. And we have many different programs for students. And I'm gonna hold off because I'm about to mention what kind of programs we offer in just a moment. Um, we do have some wonderful alumni at Queens. For those of you that are familiar with Jerry Seinfeld, he's a famous actor and comedian, had his own wonderful TV show in the 1990s named after his last name. He is an alumni of Queens College. Also a Grammy Award winning and Hall of Fame musician, Paul Simon is alumni. And for those of you that are Marvel movie fans and you love Iron Man, the director and actor of Iron Man, John Favreau, wow. is also an alumni of Queens, yes. So, and I'm a big movie <laughs> fan. So certainly a wonderful thing throughout that as well too. But with that being said, I do wanna mention we have some great rankings here at Queens College. So as a prospective student or parent that is watching this session today with us, rankings are certainly important. Definitely consider that when you're looking at your institutions, both rankings, fees, your programs, everything in between. Here at Queens College, um, actually according to this year within the Times Higher Education, Queens College was named a top 100 best public university in the entire United States, which is a wonderful ranking that we are very proud of to have throughout that. But also, we are known for our return on investment. So you may be thinking, what is return on investment? What, what exactly does that mean? So ROI or return on investment is how much are you as a student and your family spending on your education? And what are you getting in return? So what are the average starting salaries when you graduate? What are the job placements when you graduate? What's the percentage of those things as well? And that's something that we really focus on here at Queens College because we wanna make sure not only that you get the best education possible, but that you have good outcomes upon graduation. So according to Business Insider, Queens College is actually number four for best college for return on investment. So again, very proud behind that as well too. Now, Queens College is a part of the CUNY system. So you may be thinking, what is CUNY? I see that at the bottom of your screen on the right-hand corner. What exactly is that? CUNY stands for the City University of New York. It is the largest public urban education system here in the entire United States. So Queens College is a part of the CUNY system. There are 25 schools in total that are within CUNY, and again, all located here within New York City itself. Now, I really wanna mention this because this is very important. When I was a student, I was really intrigued about my institution's opportunities for me when I graduated. So I was looking at what are the recent graduates in my program? What kind of companies are they working for? What kind of things that were they able to achieve? And this is something that is important that I really encourage everyone watching today to look into at their institutions that they're looking to go to as well. And here at Queens College, we have great opportunities for our students. You can see here on the screen, we've actually had recent graduates that have gone on to do internships and work for well-known companies like Amazon, Google, even NASA, just to name a few as well. And every single year, we actually host a job fair. So that allows our students to attend this for free on campus where we invite over 100 companies to this. So you as a student can look uh, to meet with them, uh, even possibly interview with them to hopefully obtain an internship or a job upon your graduation. Now, we do have some wonderful statistics of our students' achievements. So we have had three students that have actually gone on to win Pulitzer Prizes. Whoa. Which is fantastic. I'm sure most of you know about Pulitzer Prizes. So again, we've had three wonderful students that have won that. And in the last four years alone, we've actually had 13 students that have been named Fulbright Scholars, which is a very prestigious award for many students here. And for those of you that love music, and you may be fans of music as well too, like myself, 
the premier award that you would get as a musician or as an artist is called a Grammy Award. And in the last 40 years, our faculty and alumni here at Queens have actually been nominated or won over 100 Grammy Awards, wow. so, which is an achievement within itself and a wonderful opportunity. So we do have a great music and arts programs that are here as a whole. Now, as I kind of go through these last final slides as I wrap up here for my presentation, I want to mention accommodations because that's really important for students as you looked about where you're going to live, what kind of opportunities are available. Here at Queens College, you do have the opportunity or flexibility to live either on campus or off campus. So it's completely up to you. Now, if you live on campus, we have a great student apartment complex called the Summit Apartments. It comes fully furnished, so it has your kitchen, it has your furniture, everything included within that. Um, it also has a great fitness center here on right there located at the complex itself, free Wi-Fi throughout campus, and it is centrally located here on campus. But again, if you have family that live in the area here in New York City or you just want to find an off-campus accommodation, you can certainly live there as well. Also, great dining facilities here on campus. And our dining halls do have great offerings for students of food choices, but even catering to their needs. We have halal food offerings. We have vegetarian food offerings, kosher, and a variety of others, again, right here on campus. Now, in terms of programs, we have a variety of programs for students to choose for their major. So whether you're looking to study business, you're looking to study science programs, computer science, or even arts, Queens College has offerings for many different students. So you can see here a full listing of the wonderful programs that we do offer for students. So again, catering to all needs and the entry requirements, which I will mention, are the same at every single program uh, that you are looking to get into for uh, your particular studies overall throughout that. Now, our most recognizable programs and most popular are business administration, computer science, and art. So those are the ones that are probably most popular right now here at Queens. But again, we fit all kinds of categories no matter what you are interested in looking to study. Now, this slide is actually probably the ones I'm most excited to talk about. And the reason for that, here at Queens College, we are really well known for our affordable uh, cost for students. You may have saw on the ranking screen, we're actually number nine for most affordable mid-sized to large college and university here in the US. So we actually have really affordable cost for our students. So you can see here in terms of the fee structure, Tuition per year here at Queens College is just $18,600 per year. That is an amazing cost for students, especially here in the wonderful city of New York City. Um, so it is a pretty affordable cost. And that's one of the things that we are known for is students get an affordable education and they have great outcomes upon that as well. So if you're looking at the full fee, so if you take into account tuition, mandatory fees, and even health insurance, Per year, on average, you're looking to spend about 20,000 US dollars. Now, the only thing that is not included within this is accommodation or, or living cost. And the reason for that, again, you have the option to, to live on campus or off campus. So it just depends on where you're living will vary between your living costs through that. But if you're looking for an idea about what you may be looking to spend on average throughout that, anywhere from 10,000 to 14,000 US dollars per year on average for living expenses can be anticipated from that. So again, but it could be just depending on where you're choosing to live. So again, very affordable cost overall. Now, the final thing that I wanna mention and the very exciting thing for students to know about is our scholarship opportunities and our deadlines. So if you are a prospective student that is watching this session today or a family member uh, that is interested in joining us here at Queens College and applying through uh, wonderful Mesa's here, we do have some great scholarships that are offered for this upcoming fall and next spring. So for any student that may be entering into through our what we call Global Student Success Program, we have up to $2,000 entry scholarship that you can apply for overall throughout that. So a wonderful scholarship opportunity there. But also when you are here on campus, there are many other scholarships that you can apply for once you are here on campus as well. 
And we also at this moment are offering what we call an early bird waiver discount. So what that is for any student that is coming through, again, our Global Student Success Program, which is a program designed for year one to give students extra support and extra attention throughout their studies. If a student has an offer through that and they accept it by May the 7th, which is just about three weeks away, they will have their $500 administration fee waived as well. So something that we are really excited to offer for our students. Now there is plenty of time to still apply. Um, our deadline for this upcoming fall is not until July the 20th and classes will begin on August the 25th. Um, if you are interested in applying, I certainly recommend the earlier the better. It just allows for more time to prepare prepare for your studies to begin the visa processes and please reach out to uh, MACES as they can help you through that process and that time as well too. So those are just some exciting things that I did want to mention with that. So I hope everyone enjoyed that brief presentation um, through there as well too. And with that, I'll pass it back over to you now, Ruham. Thank you so much, Blake. Um, it was such a great uh, presentation. I think in a very short span of time, you were able to cover pretty much all the basics. But what I could understand is uh, great university, great rankings. Uh, I mean, one of the most illustrious set of alums that I certainly could see, uh, especially in the music and arts, uh, that kind of arena. Um, the cost of tuition fees is about 18,600, which is pretty much one of the lowest that I've seen. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it comes as, as you know, as, as you said, return on investment. So uh, small investment for a big um, gain, uh, which is a great quality education. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can stay on campus. Uh, there is, of course, I mean, this is one of the this is the most diverse community in the world. Um, so, um, you know, what a, what a great place to be. If you're interested in applying, as you as Blake just said, there is still time till July to apply. However, um, you know, um, our, our offices are uh, open virtually. You can reach out to us on Facebook. Uh, you know, you can send us messages. You can go into our website, which is www.macesmedia.com. You can call us at 017 and we'll be able to help you uh, set up uh, an appointment with one of our experienced counselors and uh, get you to apply. Um, usually, Queens College has been phenomenally good in terms of offers. So you can expect to get your offer anywhere between two days to uh, you know, 10 days. Uh, usually what happens is whenever there is an issue, we go and uh, talk to Blake and Blake sorts it out for our students. And uh, what a great support, Blake, you have been uh, to our students. I also wanted to introduce my colleague, uh, Marsha, Khanum, uh, Marsha Beg, uh, who is uh, going to um, uh, you know, help us with some of these questions and we've got quite a few. So Marsha, you wanna take over some of the questions? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Hi, Blake. Um, I'm just going to bring in some questions for you. I'm sure there's quite a few that you've already covered, but um, let's let's just choose one randomly. Um, all right. So the question is, so does ECA matter when um, you're considering scholarships? So you mentioned about an entry level scholarship and also a waiver. But I guess what you could add on is, is there any other scholarship opportunity? Maybe that's something you know you can touch on. I'll be happy to, Maisha. And thank you so much for just asking that question and to those that had it as well. So um, if I understand correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, ECA meaning extracurricular activities, I I'm assuming as well okay. too within that. Uh, wonderful. Um, so within that entry scholarship that I did mention uh, for students, um, we will not be taking into consideration any extracurricular activities. And actually, uh, that is a good thing for students in particular. And the reason I mention that is we just will be looking at your just your academics, so just your transcripts that you're looking at overall um, throughout that as well, too. And as long as you receive that offer letter, admission letter through the GSSP, you will be eligible for that uh, potential scholarship throughout that as well, too. Now, the great thing, though, with any extracurricular activities that you do have, that certainly can be helpful for any future scholarship opportunities that you may be looking for. So as I mentioned earlier, there are more scholarships you can apply for once you are a current student here at Queen. So having that on your uh, CV, having some of those extra activities can be helpful throughout that time as well. So great question. 
Perfect. That's that's good news. All right. So let's let's dive in into maybe a lighter question. Um, so yeah, I've you know since I've been looking forward to this event, I was thinking about New York and you know missing it <laughs> quite a lot. Um, so I guess they want to know: Is it really expensive to live in New York? Uh, what about the rent or student housing? You've covered the um, on-campus question there before. Yeah, no, great question. I'm happy to talk about this because this is an important question. And certainly as you think about living expenses as a student. So here in New York City, it can at times um, be a little bit more on the higher end in terms of living expenses. And that's just the nature of, of being in a little bit of a larger city as well too. But what I will say is a great benefit for students here at Queens College, because we are a more affordable institution, so we do have great tuition fees, it can kind of help offset some of those living expenses that you may be looking. So I have met with many of students that have studied in smaller cities uh, at other institutions, and they actually overall with their costs ended up spending more than they did here because of their other remaining costs that they had to pay for in terms of the institution fees. So um, that is something that I think Hopefully our students get the pleasure to have within that too. But I also want to mention if you are a student that is looking to live off campus, mm -hmm. sometimes living off campus, the prices can be a bit more um, affordable depending on where you're looking at because you have that flexibility to select that. And some students right. will have other roommates that will be living with them as well too. So to try to share some of those accommodation costs to try to make it a little bit more towards what their preference is as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, all right. So the next one is going to be from Mez and um, he or she asked, can I transfer to another CUNY college? Yeah, great question. That's a wonderful question. So um, short answer, yes, you certainly can transfer uh, to another CUNY college as well too. So whether you're already at a CUNY college right now at the moment uh, and studying and you'd like to come to Queens College, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And the same applies from here for another student that may be looking at some point to, to go to another CUNY college as well. The Good thing, as I mentioned earlier, since we are a part of the CUNY family, so we're all part of the CUNY system, it actually can kind of make that transfer process a bit more easier because you're already in the CUNY okay. system. So if you are interested in doing that, so using example, if you're already at another institution within CUNY and would like to come to Queens College, let your advisor there at, uh, at your CUNY school know, let us know, let uh, Mesa's know as well too, and we can work with you to try to help you through that process as well. So yes, that is a possibility. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's take a hard hitting question. Um, so it's from Shadab and he says, hello, good evening to Blake. Hope you're well. I had two questions. What are the minimum SSC and HSC or O-level and A-level requirements for one of your colleges? Um, so that's, that's our national curriculum that he refers to on SSC and HSC. I think you're muted. Yes. So sorry, thank you about that. I was like, uh, it, it kind of went through the mute from there. So thank you, Ruham, okay. uh, for that. And thank you, Meisha, for asking that question. And really good question as well, too. So thank you for asking that about the minimum requirements. So to give everyone just a quick idea. So here at Queens College, what we're looking for. Uh, so if you are studying the local curriculum there uh, in Bangladesh uh, in particular, so just the minimum uh, requirement that we are looking for for students is HSC with a 40% average. So if you mm -hmm. have that 40% average, you can come through our GSSP or our Global Student Success Program as well too. And if you're average is a little bit higher, so say about 50% average, you can actually come directly into Queens College through the direct admission through that. So we have two very flexible uh, requirements for those students that are looking through that as well too. And if you are studying the British curriculum, so O levels, uh, even A levels as well too. For O levels, uh, we just require five subjects with an overall average of a D through the GSSP. And then for direct entry or general admission, it's five subjects with an overall average of a C. So again, if you're looking at the baseline minimum, that will be just five subjects of a D and going back to HSC, just a 40% average as well. 
That's fantastic. That's so good to know. Um, so on that note, I also had a question. Um, so Blake, on, on top of, you know, the um, either from the national curriculum or from the O-level A-level background, is SAT still going to be required on top of that? So great question. So SAT will actually not be required. Um, so for students, and I hope that's promising news for many of you as well too. So Queens College actually does not require you to take the SAT um, as part of your entry into Queens. So it is not required. Now with that, if you already have an SAT score as a student, or if you are still planning to take it, please feel free to do so as well too throughout that. But again, it won't impact your entry. Part of that as well too, and I will mention, um, many other schools here in the United States are actually starting to relax their entry requirements when it comes to SAT and even the ACT. Um, obviously, as we all are in a uh, virtual world now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many schools are waiving SAT requirements as well too, just because it is has been challenging for students to take those uh, because of that as well. So here at Queens, it will not be required for our students. Fantastic news. Um, that's great to know. So um, on top of that, let's just take another question on here. Um, so Afraz is asked, so would Queen's College help students find a job? So if you want to take that away. Yeah, thank you, Afra, for your question through there. So if you are a student that is interested in uh, working, you know, during your studies as well too, that is certainly a possibility. So here at okay. Queens and other institutions in the United States, as an international student, you can actually work on campus part-time up to 20 hours per week during your studies. So many of our students that do work on campus work in places like the research facilities, the campus labs, the dining halls, et cetera, throughout that too. And when school is not in session, so say during the break, you have that flexibility to then work full time up to 40 hours per week as well too. Now, if you are interested in doing that, we can help you through that. So our international office, the ISS, will actually assist you as a student through that. So they'll help guide you through that process actually during orientation. So when you first become a student, they will talk through that process with you. So that way you're familiar with it and can know when to begin that when you would like to as well. So yes, you do have that opportunity. Perfect, that's so good to know. I think you're muted, Rambai. A related question. Thank you so much, Marsha. Um, you know, um, the, uh, the the something related to that, but uh, in, again, living expense and work. Of course, you can work only on campus uh, during um, your studies, right? Um, and but is it possible to pay for your living expense doing part-time jobs? Like, how many international students can do part-time jobs? Yeah, that's a great question, Ruham. Yeah, and that's something that comes up as well, too. And we try to help students through that. So what I will say, for those of you who want to work on campus during your studies, as Ruham was mentioning as well, too. So within that pay that you get, um, it is going to kind of help you in some uh, extra expenses that you might have. But I will say, um, try not to rely on that for for your, your full living expenses or anything like that as well, too. It, it's certainly good to have extra spending money, but I would not rely on that for your living expenses as a whole um, uh, overall for students throughout that too. Um, so again, good extra spending money, but definitely wouldn't focus that for to try to compensate for your entire cost. And, um, you know, the, this is another question that came up. A lot of students are now gravitating towards GED in Bangladesh. Uh, a lot of like, you know, instead of doing um, A levels or whatever, uh, they feel like they can get the GED and get an, if they want to go to the America, it's a high school qualification. Do you accept GED? Because I know a lot of students, a lot of universities do and a lot of don't. We do accept the GED. So oh, if yes. you are a student that is uh, that is looking at that option, that path, we, we do accept that. Oh, that's, that's, that's great because that opens up the opportunity for um, many, many uh, students. Um, and, and SAT is not required as well. So it's really easy peasy. I think you know, uh, really, you have sort of made it so flexible, uh, students can get in. Now, you know, of course, the next question, and uh, this is more, I guess, a discussion point rather than a question. Visa, um, what has been your experience with regards to visa success from Bangladesh? I mean, I have been, uh, you know, in Mesa's, we have sent quite a few students over to Queens. And for some reason, 
we have had a tremendous amount of success. I mean, you know, um, it's it's still very, mm, um, how do you say, unpredictable, like whether somebody's going to get the visa or not. But for some reason, uh, there I feel like Queen's College has the visa gods shining on them because we have not had a single visa rejection. So what has been your experience generally, uh, you know, for, for visa? Yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that's very important to, to look at and consider. And as you mentioned, thankfully, we've had great success uh, from students from Bangladesh, uh, specifically for their visas, especially through uh, yourself at Mesa's as well, too. And, and honestly, part of that is the great preparation that um, is provided to the students. So both from Mesa's, just helping students through that process, getting them ready and knowing what to prepare for and just through that entire process as well. And the best guidance that I would recommend to any student when it comes to that is just get prepared, practice, make sure you have all of your documents in order. So make sure you have your I-20 from your institution. So from here at Queens, you have your passport, your academic documents, and really ex have in your mind and work through this as well too about explaining to the visa officer why you are choosing to go to that institution. So for example, why are you looking to, why did you choose Queens College for your study? So to give everyone just a quick idea without too much of a long story, here in the United States alone, there's over 4,500 institutions. So that visa officer really wants to know of all those schools that you could have gone for in the United States, why did you choose this one school out of 4,500? So really be comfort prepared to show that and every student has their own reasons for coming and studies and why they chose their program as well too so thankfully we've had the pleasure of having great visa track record and success for students from bangladesh uh, which has been fantastic from that and again i think just a, a key proponent is just practicing just being ready uh, through those questions and having all your documents in order i try to tell students it's okay to be nervous uh, but don't worry about it they're just asking you some simple questions about the purpose for your studies you're making sure you have all your financial documents and things in order. And hopefully from that too, things could, should go well. Um, another question that came up. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, Blake. Uh, that was a very good answer. Uh, does Queens College accept credit transfer? We do accept credit transfer, yes. So we do have credit transfer uh, options for students as well too. So what we will need to see should you be looking to have credit transfer is when you uh, do apply through us, please submit your transcripts from your um, institution. So the college or university or whatever it may be from the case that you are looking to get that credit transfer. So please do submit those documents to us so we can look through that um, and see the uh, just results from that as well too. And then later on, you actually be meeting with uh, an advisor and they will uh, guide you about how many credits will then transfer over. So yes, we do accept that. So up to how many credits are accepted? Yeah, so maximum amount is up to 75 uh, credits that can be accepted. Okay, that's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, Blake, thank you so much. It's been such a, a pleasure uh, speaking to you. Oh, 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 right, sorry, 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 before we say goodbye. Now, you mentioned something interesting. You mentioned the GSSP program. And then you mentioned the direct entry. So what is the difference like if for, you know, for the students to understand what is the difference between the two and why should the students choose one over the other? Great question, Ruham. So um, as Ruham is mentioning, as I was talking a little bit about briefly earlier in my presentation, we do have two entry paths for students. So one through the GSSP, which stands for the Global Student Success Program, and then just direct admission into Queens College itself. So what's the difference between the two? So what, what is the difference for a student and what should you choose from that as well too? So first off, the difference is between it, in the GSSP, you will get some added support in your study. So you will, we do have smaller class sizes. So on average, it's about 15 students per class. So you'll have a little bit more individual attention uh, throughout your studies, or if you need any extra support, it will be provided through there as well too. Now, the GSSP um, it can also be for students that are looking for what we call a soft landing spot. So you know, coming to a new country for the first time, coming to the US, coming to a new culture, a new language for many uh, students that may kind of want to have a, an easier transition, they can come through the GSSP if they would like that as well too. Now, in terms of the fee structure, in terms of the duration, things like that, 
there is no difference. So whether you're coming through the GSSP path or you're coming through direct admission, the fees are the exact same. So there is no different from that. You are the Queens College student from day one, no matter which path. And again, you finish your degree and get your uh, degree diploma in the same exact amount of time. So there is no difference in terms of students for that. You will notice that some of the entry requirements are a little bit different. So if you are looking for direct entry as well too, they do have a certain GPA requirement that you do need to hit, as I was mentioned a little bit earlier as well too, if you're in the local Bangladesh curriculum, it's a 50% average on the HSC um, or a C average in five subjects for O level, A levels. Whereas through the GSSP, if you don't meet that, it's okay. We have a secondary path. So if you have below a 50%, but above 40, you can still come through GSSP. And then as well too, for uh, O levels, A levels, just a D average in five subjects and this is a very important point for our audience to understand that um, it costs the same amount of money if you're an international student going to uh, you know a new country and especially an overwhelming city like New York City uh, where there's so many different uh, things hitting you you know like uh, uh, you know there's always I mean it's the city that never sleeps I guess that's Las Vegas anyway so it's um, uh, you know it, it, you've got everything uh, restaurants, bars, and, uh, you know, a lot of things are happening around you. So a program like GSSP can really keep you grounded, give you that extra support. Your professors know you by name. Uh, you are part of that community that helps you sort of uh, find your place in baby steps, so to speak, so that you're really able to uh, do better. And I think there has been a statistic where students who go through programs like these end up getting a higher GPA at graduation. So that is something that is uh, important to uh, consider. Um, so, so, you know, uh, again, those of you who have listened in, thank you so much. Please, uh, you know, uh, if you want to apply, the deadline is coming. However, there are some uh, scholarships that are available, but if you want to take advantage of that, you want to apply as soon as possible. Uh, the early bird special, which is like the $500 uh, off, uh, that comes into play uh, if you apply and get an offer by May 7th and accept. So please get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us through Facebook, to our website. Uh, you can call us at 017-556-6012. I think the link, uh, links and the information is down below, as, as they say. I can't see them, but <laughs> hopefully you guys can. Um, Blake, it was such a pleasure um, having you. Um, you know, you've been such a great friend to us, to our Bangladeshi students. Uh, and they have always have the best things to say about Queen's College, which is why we feel encouraged to send students uh, to, to you. Um, so thank you so much for coming on board uh, and, and giving this information to our students. Absolutely. It's a great pleasure. Thank you, Ruham. Thank you, Mesha, for, for having me today. Thank you, everyone tuning in. Uh, we certainly hope you enjoyed the session and would love to support you in any way. So thank you so much and uh, happy Ramadan as well to everyone uh, watching. Yeah, that, that's another thing. I mean, people who are listening in, they're probably, they're hating themselves from all the food that they've eaten and they're about <laughs> to go to sleep. So thank you so much for listening in uh, uh, and see you again uh, soon. Mm -hmm.